you know there is a state in india elavar somewhere in up elavar so what happened in elavar there came a case where the lady is accusing the boy of rape the scenario is lady is saying that this boy had a physical relationship with me saying that i want to marry you but he never had the intention of marriage recent case boy is saying that because the lady is having mangal dosh i cannot marry so they went to the lucknow university jyotish had and he gave him 10 days time the high court give 10 days time to check whether the lady is mangalik or not so that it will be decided whether the person is right or not this is a very laughable <laughs> laughable scenario but you see now what is happening wrong information in people is bringing shame to such things if some judge makes a statement that this is all you know superstition etc then you cannot say it is wrong also because the course of event as it is going propels you to you know criticize the process of this particular process of you know mangalik and it compels you to criticize but the reality is something else no so i think there is a question always comes in my mind that we indians are very religious why india needs so much of religion because of such people you need religion you need to pray to god that my god may we never meet such people in our life who can bring shame to all to us and to society and to the science also but is one thing is there why i am talking with this topic till the time other people join little bit about match making a little bit about free will i have always been talking about this topic but once again so when we start with jyotish why we are learning jyotish what is the purpose of learning jyotish is the first question that you should ask why it came into being it is a vedic time it is a vedic period it is shrot it is divided in two parts okay shrot and smart shrot is listening and only getting the knowledge the philosophical part smart is doing it yagya fire sacrifice doing the fire sacrifice now to do this fire sacrifice you need time i think the thought originally comes from to know whether there will be a rain today or not how will be the weather today it came from that because you know it is an open land the rishi is going to do fire sacrifice in an open area and if it starts raining it will be difficulty it started there from and then it took the you know it 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 went into years months days and then came the concept of what is a favorable time to do it you see th- this is very scientifically done all these navratris it comes twice a year actually it comes four times a year not twice but primarily it comes twice and when when winter is ending summer is starting it will come in april and when rainy season is ending winter is starting it will come into october right so they are specifically finding out that what is the time when much bacterial infections are there there are much changes in the season and at that point of time they are going into things such as worshiping god as to get power this power will save you from disease so it looks like that you know saving from disease and other such misfortunes devi is the best one to do so shiva can also save you vishnu can also save you but they are more taken as a protective fatherly god and they are not approached with the aspect of wishing fulfilling even the smallest wish and desire such as keeping you free from a health problem devi is seen in this particular way so for this purpose of smart you know doing the fire sacrifice visiting a temple doing a particular thing if you want to do a uh if you if you want to do a penance for one penance is what technically what you know now as fasting that is penance this always compels me you said parvati did a lot of penance to get shiva what she did in penance na i want to know i cannot be satisfied with she did a penance kya kiya parvati ne ye to batao hame bhi prapt karna bhai parvati akeli thodi prapt karke rahegi to right 
तो यू विल डू इट फॉर वन ईयर वॉट इज द ड्यूरेशन ऑफ वन ईयर फ्रॉम वेर द वन ईयर स्टार्ट दिस स्टार्टेड फ्रॉम देर तो प्राइमरली इट इज स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम मुहूर्त राइट टू फाइंड द टाइम ओवर द टाइम एज इट डेवलप्ड पीपल ऑल्सो स्टार्टेड रियलाइजिंग दैट ओके वेन एवर वी आर डूइंग थिंग्स इन अ पर्टिकुलर मोमेंट इट इज गिविंग अस अ पर्टिकुलर रिजल्ट ऑल्सो and this is a long development over 5000 6000 years i think people started finding out that if we are doing something at a particular point of time it is leading us to a particular result this gives to the birth of muhurta along with this also comes the concept in the same line that if a person is born at a particular time his fortune will also be also shape in a particular way which is found to be true then comes the concept that if a question is asked at a particular time the time should also have an answer to it which also came to be true and surprisingly in ancient times mathematics develops from astrology because basically there is no need of counting there are 12 months it is astrology which is introducing that we should divide it into 12 now for that you have to remember the 12 so the introduction of numbers and introductions of mathematics and calculus that comes in the starting comes from astrology the development happens but then this our rishis you see the rishi is a very busy person he have a lot of work to do first of all his life is very difficult even to get food he will have to go to the jungle pluck the fruits take it cook it long work is there now in so much of busy lifestyle if you you see maximum work is done on dharma second maximum work is done on already available literature right so on vedas brahmana has written commentaries are written and all of that is written third level of work is done on astrology fourth level of uh, work is done in religion more than religion it is worked upon astrology you see the number of classics 18 puranas are there and reformers of astrology are 25 every reformer is writing three four book so on puranas in religion 18 books are there in astrology 100 books are there so you know the importance right they are giving more time to astrology why we are giving so much time and so much importance to astrology what is the particular purpose prediction is the particular purpose or what so according to me prediction is not the particular purpose as such but yes they want to know what will happen because then everything is dependent on what will happen so they first want to know what type of person it is good nature bad nature he will be successful he will not be successful he will live healthy he will live unhealthy he they want to know it first so that the next course of action can be taken so because they first want to know whether he will be healthy or not whether he will have raj yoga or not whether he will have financial freedom or not comes the part of prediction but the ultimate purpose is identifying and then remedying it if i know that this child is going to have bad health then right from starting i should do something for the child right from the childhood i should prepare what type of food this child should be given to what type of strength exercise he should be given to right from which elements he should be protected from and all of these things right so though prediction is a secondary purpose changing life is the primary purpose astrologically speaking changing life goes into three part this complete remedial measure is a part of muhurt we have been talking about it always right match making vastu correct time to do something these three things form muhurt and then other variations can also be there this particular numerology that we are learning once again i also want to take it in the three department understanding what is the nature behavior character of the person and the things he is going to face in future that is a normal part the basic point ultimate point is changing it so for that you, we should use numerology for match making we should use numerology to finding the good home good property good vehicle for ourselves where we will be prosperous the energy of the place should match with our place uh, sorry the energy the energy of the place should match with our energy it should be beneficial to us that is point number 2 and most important point is this particular muhurta point that every person can succeed if they do right thing at right point of time no one can succeed if they do wrong thing at wrong point of time 
So this Mohorta is another point for Mohorta. I have given you the principal, right? The previous one, the weekday and adding the number together and finding the thing. Now in this Mohorta part comes matchmaking. Regarding matchmaking, I have a statement to say always, see, the one who knows good astrology, they will use all these things, no matchmaking and Mohorta and all of these things. They will see the good result also. They will be believer into it. Um, those who don't know good astrology, they cannot use it. So they become disbelievers, right? It goes this particular way, right? So it works. That's the basic point. Now in this matchmaking, this Mangal Dosh comes. Now basic point, if I have to explain in a particular horoscope, see, let's understand a very, very basic point. And this Topic is taken so in depth, many books are written over it. You talk of sages, they have given no importance to it at all. Out of many classics that are available here, if I will, if you ask me, no, sir, how many books you can say are classics of astrology, I can mention some 150, 200 books that can be referred as classics, 250 maximum, if I become very, very liberal. Out of these 250 books, only in three, four books, out of 2000, 3000 shlokas that they will deal with, one shloka will talk of something which is resembling Mangal Dosh, though they are not using the word Mangal Dosh as such. Right? But they will say that it is bad for marriage, it can cause divorce. Now, where this concept came from that if this is present, you should not match the horoscope, I don't know. It is not written there also. First of all, this is written in Jatak text, right? Predictive text. Predictive text does not deal with matchmaking at all. Point one. It is not dependent on matchmaking. The problem is what people have done. They have taken predictive principle and they have started applying it into matchmaking. This is problem number one. So whether the person is Mangalik or not Mangalik is not a part of Muhurta. Because it is not a part of Muhurta, it cannot be part of matchmaking. Point number one. This is very clear. Now what is happening in Mangal though? Some classics are saying that if Mars is situated in first house, if Mars is situated in the first house of horoscope, fourth house of horoscope, seventh house of horoscope, eighth house of horoscope, eleventh, twelfth house of horoscope, it is Mangalic. Second house is dubious. Some say Second house Mangal is Mangalik, some say not. So it is a South Indian approach basically. South Indian sages will say Mars in second house is Mangalik, North Indians will not say. Debatable talk. How many houses are there? Six. So Mars goes to these six houses, person will be Mangalik, the result is the person, there can be a bad marital life, person can have divorce. We are using it in matchmaking because matchmaking is done for the purpose of marriage only. This is problem number one. Matchmaking can be done for any purpose. While making friends, while joining a company, you should do matchmaking. It is not related to husband wife only. Point number one. In this particular scenario, it is saying that marriage can be bad or there can be divorce. Is it the only combination for bad marriage or divorce? Absolutely not. There can be many other combinations for bad marriage and divorce. Then why it is given so importance? I don't understand. Now the same classic will tell Mars in the ascendant, there will be Mangal Dosh, marital life will be bad. Divorce can be there, this thing. The same classic while dealing with result of Mars in ascendant will tell good result. Right. This will go with the seventh house also. So one thing I don't understand. Bad marriage should be seen with respect to seventh house. Divorce should be seen with respect to eighth house. Now you know astrology, there are many factors. So if the seventh house is good, seventh lord is good, eighth house is good, eighth lord is good. Then basically our understanding the Astrological understanding tells me that their Mangal Dosh have no importance at all. Useless. Useless to consider because then Mangal Dosh is one factor. You see, Mangal Dosh is like a combination. It is called Yoga. And there can be 100 such combinations. Right? 
But when you analyze the house, seventh house for marriage, eighth house for divorce, there are three factors: house, house lord, and significator. Right? House, house lord, significator. Three factors are there. If these three factors are good, the result of house is good. In that particular scenario, this hundred plus yoga you don't consider at all. A simple example will be Gajkeshri Yoga, right? Jupiter in Kendra to Moon creates Gajkeshri Yoga. What is the result of Gajkeshri Yoga? No one is clear about it. What is the result? No one is clear about it. Gajkeshri Yoga, you are very clear about. Result of Gajkeshri, you are not clear about. Okay. Say one result of Gajkeshri Yoga, you can take Gaj is elephant. Keshri means lion. It is also used for king. So Gaj Keshri is king on lion. Okay. So technically Raj Yoga. Gaj Keshri is a Raj Yoga. But in this condition, Rajyog is seen from the 10th house. You say 10th Lord is very weak, combust. There is a debilitated planet in 10th house expected by other malefics. In that scenario, can you still say that Gajkeshri Yoga will make the person kingly? Gajkeshri will give Rajyog? No. You will not consider this point at all. Then why Mangal Dosh? What is specific in Mangal Dosh so much? Nothing specific in Mangal Dosh as such. Right. This is point number one. The, it is given too much height, which it should not be given at all. But once again, the case I started with, you now person with such, uh, per person with such thinking comes from a very you know poor intellectual background. So it is very, you, know, you cannot convey it to them, but let us like and convey it to you. Now let, let's go a bit deeper into it. So you understand the importance, right? A yoga, according to me, there is no use of yoga at all. Yoga is pretty useless one. So you will see, though there are many books, you know, these many yogas, that many yogas in astrology, we talk a lot about yogas also. But if you see prime classics, no, many yogas are not mentioned. So yogas, you can put into three categories, three, four categories, you can put yogas into moon yogas, sun yogas. Right. Moon yoga, important should be considered. Sun yoga, important to be considered. Sky yoga, very important to be considered. Then other. Other don't consider. The consideration of it is completely choice based. You want to consider it, you should consider it. You don't want to consider it, you should not consider it. No issue. This other combination, some have written 300 combinations. So 300 combinations he have written. One astrologer have written 1000 combinations. So then so you can do as many combinations as you want. But you go to this book, you go to the starting of this. First combination related to first house, Sarir Sok Yoga, combination for having a good body. Sarir Drubalta Yogam combination for having a bad body. Why the sages have written combination, you will understand from this particular point. Now this Sarir Sok Yogam that gives a good body and Sarir Dorbal Yogam that gives a bad body, weak body, diseased body, right? Dorbal means weakness. Is basically dealing with the normal funda that you have learned before. If Lagna Lord goes to 6th, 8th and 12th house, further afflicted by malefic, one will have a weak body. To know this, you don't have to apply this formula itself. If you just apply house analysis principle clearly, cleverly, then you will not need to apply these combinations at all. That's why I have put it into other, useless. This combination is for whom I will tell you in parampara, no, there is a point. See, suppose someone belongs to a family of astrologers and a grandfather is astrologer, father is astrologer, me also astrologer. So now there is a name, fame and prestige in society. Clientele is there. Many people visit. Now suppose I have a child. He is full. Still he have to continue the profession. How he will do? He cannot learn astrology. What I will do? I will teach him 20-30 yogas. Did you remember these yogas? Apply them. Predictors. So at least he can have a livelihood from astrology. But he can never be a good astrologer. This you know. So Mangal Dosh for that matter, comes in the category of other yoga as useless as it can be. Normal house analysis you do. If in normal analysis there is a combination for bad marriage or divorce, it will happen. 
whether mangal dosh is not mangal dosh is there or not it does not matter from the normal 7000 8000 analysis if the marital life is good there is no divorce then my friend believe me no matter where mars is situated in there will not be divorce at all you can produce a book on mangal yoga you can give 300 examples on that still i will not accept it because of the nature of it i will i will also talk about one more thing right before before we go to our numerology topic discuss one more thing regarding so you know, this particular the fallacy of research this is very i am just wanting to talk about it since many years and so this is the reality about mangal dosh this should not be considered in match making at all useless as useless as it can be match making many other principles are there which should be used this is very true if two horoscopes are matched together these people like each other these people love each other see more than liking love what i think you know liking and love is all useless okay the point is synchronization the decision husband is taking wife should agree to that the decision wife is taking husband should agree to that they should think in the same lines they should have same priorities that is what should be there now love etc is a temporary point right so the synchronization in the thought synchronization in the decision making synchronization in to which things you give more importance to is the basic point of match making and when these two things are together then it is a good thing you see you should understand match making as there are two partners in company the company deals with a product one partner loves the product another partner loves the money this company don't have a good future at all this person will be working on product this money person will be dissatisfied one day the product will hit money will come the person who was greedy for money will take every money this person will suffer ultimately they will fight they will separate either today or tomorrow match making is basically there are two partners in the company and both of them love the product equally only then it can sustain for a lifetime so match making is very important but using principles such as mangal dosh is as useless as it can okay this point is understood very clear <laughs> 